itu ada di mana-mana. I used to drive up to Malaysia quite often for short holidays. On one particular trip, I was driving to Penang along the NS Highway late at night. As it was off-peak season, for most of the stretch, mine was the only car on the dark road. My wife was sleeping when we were approaching Ipoh. Out of nowhere, there was this terrible stench that seemed to envelop us right in the car. It got so bad my wife woke up and asked me what that smell was. That smell, it was like some carcass or rotting meat, so pungent, so strong. At that point we sensed something was amiss. Then I remembered an uncle who had a similar experience. Stench in the car at night and subsequently his car broke down right beside a cemetery. It was only after he opened the window the stench went away and his car kick-started again. Ipoh Highway is quite infamous for their own tales, so I was hoping not here please. So I told my wife to go back to sleep while I opened the window for a, a bit of ventilation, but the smell lingered. The whole time all I hoped was to make it to the toll area where there would be people and lights. And thankfully, just as I approached the tolls, the smell dispersed. Just strange, inside the car with aircon on and window open, the stench can be so strong. Thankfully nothing happened for the rest of the night. I recounted the story to my uncle. He said a spirit might have hitched a ride and the smell was due to the rotting corpse. Nothing sinister, but still scary thinking back. This happened in a public university in Malaysia, and I cannot remember which one. This story happened in a girl's hostel block. It happened many years ago, and the freshmen were having their orientation week. One girl was allocated in a double sharing room, but was living alone. She did not have a roommate. During the orientation week, the seniors warned them not to open the door if they heard someone knock on their door in the middle of the night. When the juniors probed further, they figured that it was a ghost of their deceased senior. Years before their admission, a senior of theirs had a fight with her boyfriend on the phone at midnight. Devastated, she wanted to talk to someone and began to knock on everyone's door. But, since it was so late, no one answered her. She couldn't think straight and jumped off from the top floor. Ever since then, she would knock on everyone's door at the exact time of her passing. Upon hearing this, the girl was frightened and did not dare to sleep on her own. When night fell, she couldn't sleep and kept thinking about the story. The clock ticked and the time came. She heard distant knocking from one end of the corridor, starting from the first room. The knocks were being followed by a lady's voice. Is anyone willing to talk to me? The knocking and desperate begging grew stronger and when it was almost the girl's room, she was really scared, so much so that she hid under her bed with a blanket. Then, it was her room. The knocks were soft. When the girl was anticipating a question, she heard, I finally found someone to talk to. Upon hearing that, she passed out. After that, she learned that when the senior jumped, her head landed first. So, in her ghostly form, she was walking with her head on the floor and legs facing the sky. The junior girl made a mistake by hiding under the bed where her senior's ghost could see her through the door gap. This story was told to me by my uncle and aunt who lived near Song Chun Garden in Ipoh. And of course, the eerie things happened at their neighborhood. It happened a few years back. And back then, the locals were shocked with the news of a man getting shot multiple times in his own car 
when he was refueling petrol. Having a tarnished reputation as a member of a triad group and a loan shark, the locals thought it was enemies avenging for his evil deeds. The investigation didn't progress much, and its case is closed at present. The very car he died in was under both his nephew's and his own name. Therefore, after his death, his nephew had the right to claim the car for his own personal use. Coincidentally, his nephew stays right opposite of my uncle and aunt's house. Both of them and my cousins are dog lovers, so they had a few dogs. The night when the nephew drove the car home, which was at midnight, the dogs were disturbed by a presence, and all of them howled. Not only their dogs, but almost all dogs in the neighborhood. My aunt was alarmed, and she expressed her concern to her husband, telling him the unusual behavior of the dogs. However, my uncle brushed it off by telling her that it might be any female dog having a period, causing a high mating desire among the males. She was not sure about his reply, and went off the bed. The howling lasted until the wee hours, and they had trouble sleeping. The very next morning, my aunt went over to the opposite, and they talked about how peculiar the dog's behavior was. Soon, she found out about the car and how the previous owner died from gunshots. She was terrified by the news and related the matter to my uncle. Basically, nothing they could do. The next few nights, eerie things started to happen in the neighborhood. First, a teenage girl staying not far from the nephew's home was talking on her phone with her friend when she heard a coarse male voice interrupt their conversation. The voice was very harsh and sounded pitiful. She was so scared and quickly ended the conversation. Second, a lady was preparing dinner in the kitchen when she heard a man whispering and talking at the back lane of her house. She opened her back door and found no one. Third, a lady woke up in the middle of the night and heard a man sobbing pitifully outside of her house. She decided to peek from her window upstairs and she saw a black figure sitting under a tree outside her house and crying. And lastly, continuous barking and howling of dogs towards the car. Soon the neighbors were complaining about the strange incidents and confronted the nephew's mother. She was concerned about the car too and decided to persuade her son to take the car to a temple for blessing, which her son gladly did. After the blessing, strange incidents ended and the dogs stopped howling. I have an older cousin who has had the third eye ever since she was young. Lucky for us, she usually doesn't say anything in front of us if she sees something. But she has told us before, if she suddenly becomes very quiet or asked us to walk away, we must follow her instructions. My cousin used to stay in a very rural area in northern Johor, which is near Malacca, in a small village, about 20 households maximum, around 20 to 23 years ago. And I always visited her home when I was a young kid. There was a makeshift Indian shrine behind her home, near a small stream, and we always played there together with the other cousins whenever I visited them. There was this afternoon when it was about to rain at about 4 to 5 p.m. and we were playing near the shrine when she suddenly shouted at us come back now and she ran towards us and pulled us away and brought us home it was only a few months later when we had a gathering that she told us what had happened she said she saw an Indian ghost that was trying to play with us we were kids playing some kids games the ghost seemed like it wanted to join us and disturb us the ghost didn't look friendly and had an evil intention. Then, suddenly, an Indian god that resembled the god at the makeshift shrine appeared and subdued the ghost. That was when she shouted at us to get home immediately. Another story was told to us by my mum's close friend. She was giving birth in a private hospital in the west of Singapore about 20 years ago. There's not many private hospitals in the west. After she gave birth that night and was resting in her bed, she was woken up by someone pulling her blanket and also pulling at her arm at around 4am. 
The thing said, You are sleeping in my bed. Get out. All along, she had been praying to Guan Yin and Erlang Shen. And suddenly, she saw Erlang Shen appear and took the ghost away. How true this story is, I have no idea. Just sharing what I've heard. But for this auntie, after a few years, she went to learn from a master who said she has the life to be in this line and founded a home temple to help others ward away evil and pray for people. She's not a medium, and she mainly does praying, feng shui, and helping people set up altars at home. Nowadays, she is big time, because some of her clients made it from rags to riches. One time, she bought my parents a new Guan Yin statue. She even said, though all are statues, there are some statues which make you feel at ease and warmth when you look at them. If you see that one, that's the one you should bring home, and she will do the necessary open light. My late grandma used to stay in a big bungalow in Malaysia. I would visit her during my school holidays and spend two weeks with her. I would always sleep with her in her room during my stay. I started to experience and see strange things when I was around 15 years old. Incident 1. My late grandma's house was a three-story bungalow. She slept on the second level. As she was an early sleeper, she would go to bed around 9pm. I do not sleep that early and would watch TV in the living room on the first floor until about 11pm. This particular night at around 10pm, I was watching shows on TV and suddenly I heard noises from the kitchen. The kitchen was about 200 meters away. I thought my grandma came down to drink water. However, the lights were not turned on and I could only hear the sound of water gushing from the tap and the clinging sound when you put the cup back onto the tray. I again thought my grandma did not wish to turn on the lights and did not think too much. However, after 15 minutes, I heard noises again from the kitchen. I was a little puzzled and went to check it out. I turned on the lights and no one was there. The basin was dry and it doesn't seem like anyone had entered the kitchen at all. Incident 2 I was watching TV again on the sofa, and this time round, I had my cousin beside me. While watching TV, I saw something coming down the staircase from level 2. It was a little boy. I couldn't see the face, as it was in dark shadow form. My cousin noticed me gazing at the staircase. She told me that they were here for some time, and they do not mean to harm. Right after she said that, I saw another two figures coming down and brought the child upstairs. I believed that the other two were the boy's father and mother. Incident 3. I was sleeping in my grandma's room and she complained that someone is pulling her leg in the middle of the night. I tried to see if there was anyone there but just couldn't see anyone. Incident 4. It was the middle of the night and I heard the room door open. Someone came in and went to the restroom. How I knew that she went into the restroom was that my grandma would leave the toilet room's light on. That someone came in and went into the restroom and closed the door. Then I heard water running as if someone was showering. After about five minutes that someone came out and left the room. So I was curious and went to the toilet and bathroom and checked it out. To my surprise, the basin and the floor were both dry. So who was showering in the bathroom? Georgetown in Penang, Malaysia is a very old city. Most of the buildings downtown were built before World War II and many, especially the school buildings, were often used to station Japanese soldiers. Many of these buildings were used as prisons and execution centers too. 
This school, commonly known as CIS, is an all-girls school. It is one of the oldest schools in Malaysia. It was used as a prison by the Japanese during the war. Inside one of the classrooms, there were carvings of British prisoners' names on the wall. The school also houses the first residence of Sir Francis Light, the founder of Penang. Although the school building has been declared a heritage site, some old buildings are of no value and they were excluded from the heritage building list. One of such buildings was the canteen. Old canteen was declared unsafe and hence was torn down and a new school canteen with a badminton hall above it was subsequently built. The badminton hall has two entrances, one on each end of the hall. However, only the door on the left end of the hall is usually open. The other side has a locker come changing room, and hence the exit was not open for privacy reasons. Before one gets into the locker room, one has to go through a door, and then there is a small passageway with a surau, small mosque, on the left. There is another door before one can get to the lockers and changing area. Then there is the staircase and another door which is usually locked as mentioned above. Some years back I used to play badminton in that hall on weekends. Personally, I have not seen a ghost or heard anything out of the ordinary. My brother who was there with me every weekend once said he saw a man waving at him from one of the classrooms nearby. The school has many ghost stories but most of them, like what my brother experienced, are merely sightings of a ghost, feeling of a presence, or hearing of voices. However, there is one particular sighting which is probably one of the scariest ghost sightings I have ever come across. This story is told to me by the canteen caretaker, who was also in charge of the badminton courts. It was also told to me by my friends who were once students in that school themselves. One morning, a group of students were having their regular physical exercise session in the badminton hall. At the end of the session, all the girls went to the locker room to change. All of them left together and went back to the classroom after that. About an hour later, one of the girls realized she had lost her purse. She thought she must have left it in the changing area in the hall. Hence, she decided to go back to the locker room to look for it. She got permission from the teacher and set off for the badminton hall. When she got there, there's no longer anybody there. Being a badminton hall with dark curtains, the hall seems pretty dark without lights on. She switched on the lights and walked straight to the other end of the hall where the locker room is. When she got to the door that leads to the small passageway, she found that the door was locked. Nobody could have locked the door unless there was someone inside. Since there was no more classes in the hall, Obviously, someone was having some hanky-panky business inside the locker room. Eager to get her purse back and curious to what her schoolmates might be up to behind that door, she peeped through the small window in the door. She couldn't see anyone, but suddenly, out of the changing area, she saw a figure floating in the small passageway. It was kind of transparent, but yet seemed solid. Then the girl noticed something she did not want to believe. The floating object became clearer and clearer, and she noticed that it was a headless woman. Being someone who doesn't believe in ghosts, she refused to believe what she saw, and decided to take a closer look through the window again. Again, she saw the same figure. This time, it became clearer, and she could see a woman in a Malay costume, floating about half a meter above the ground, without a head. The girl got so frightened that she rushed out of the hall immediately. She ran to the canteen caretaker and told her what she just saw. The canteen caretaker said she dare not go up there and investigate. But she said she believed the girl's story and she was crying and she was completely pale due to the shock. The teacher later called her parents to take her home. This happened a few years ago when I took up a part-time job as a waiter at Genting Highland. As a waiter, I needed to work in shifts, sometimes at day and sometimes at night. Back then, 
I was allocated a bed at Ria apartment with my cousin, who was working with me too. We shared a big room with other workers, so basically, it was a workers' hostel. Genting is an infamous haunted place in Malaysia where many people went there for gambling, lost a huge amount of money, and committed suicide. Many sightings had been reported throughout Genting, and therefore, it is very important to pray to the deities at the temple in Genting, or get yourself a Buddha amulet for protection. The place I was staying, rear apartment, is a very dirty place. There were cases where people saw children running in the corridors, children's laughter, and heard people playing mahjong. When I first moved into the apartment with my cousin, we noticed something particular. Almost each door was guarded by an amulet, the yellow one that we always see in Hong Kong ghost movies. We knew something was spooky at that very apartment we were going to stay, but did not mention anything. Anyhow, we believed that we would be left unharmed, for we did no wrong. We were merely staying temporarily. Our stay there was normal, nothing unusual, and we did not see anything eerie, although the room we were staying in was not guarded by an amulet. Both of us were wearing Buddha amulets for protection. I almost forgot about the lurking of the unseen until one morning. That morning, I had to check in at work at 8 a.m., so as usual, I woke up at 6 and got myself ready for work. When I was ready, it was only 7 a.m. and I didn't want to go to work that early, so I sat on the floor, waiting the time to pass. My room door was wide open, and from where I sat, I could see the washroom door at the far end and the kitchen entrance, which was just opposite my room. When I was daydreaming by looking at the lamps in the kitchen, my room was pitch black, everyone else was sleeping. There was a sudden movement on my left, and I saw a man in his thirties walking out of my room. At that moment, I thought it was only one of my roommates. I didn't see his face. His back was facing me, walking towards the kitchen. I thought to myself that he was going to the kitchen to brush his teeth. A moment later, I noticed that the toilet was empty, and began thinking, why didn't he use the toilet? I kept looking at the kitchen entrance and expecting him to come out so I could say hello. I never did a formal introduction with others. After about 10 minutes, he had not come out and I couldn't hear tap water running in the kitchen. Out of curiosity, I went to check on him in the kitchen, but to my surprise, he was not in the kitchen. There was another door in the kitchen which led to the outside, but it was locked from the inside so there was no way he could have exited the kitchen via that door. Not to mention me staring at the kitchen entrance the whole time. I made my move to the toilet and still didn't find anyone. That instance, I knew I saw something. I couldn't explain his disappearance except that he is a ghost. I hurried to take my belongings and wore my shoes to work. I still remember how scary it was to wait for the lift alone afterwards. I was afraid that he might turn up and say hello to me. However, I was lucky because I didn't see him face to face. Or else, I might be running high fever the next day. Hello watchers and listeners. Thank you so much for watching. As always, a big thank you to all of the Reddit users who kindly allowed me to use their stories. If you want to help support this channel, you will find links to both my Patreon and my Teespring store in the description below. So feel free to have a look. And the biggest thank you to all of you who continue to support me. I truly do appreciate it. And remember, Papa loves you. Ha, 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 ha.